Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Orcs Workshop. Got an Ovation guitar in. And uh, I've worked on a number of these over the years. Had them with the top has come loose from the body, different things like that. This one is a problem with the bridge. We see a lot of these and I've shown a few videos already. I just wanted to show you uh, what I don't like about this bridge. And that is, you can see, and it's quite often the case where they have the two little inlays, there's a screw that goes through the top. And I believe that you can see there's a crack behind that screw and there's not really a crack behind this one, but there's a big hump. There's a big hump behind this one too. And that hump is from where the bridge is pulled loose. The bridge itself is pulled loose, but those two screws are the only thing holding the bridge onto the top. So they've actually deformed the top a lot. I'm not a fan of putting screws through a top, or through a bridge on any, for any reason, really. If it's done correctly, you don't need those. But in this case, you know, the fact that the bridge came loose, but those didn't come loose, it's really created some additional problems and the customer wants that fixed. I don't really feel like we can fix that where it's not gonna show. Uh, it's not like doing body work on a car where you can just sand it out, buff it out, and keep going and repaint it, you know, that type of thing. It's a little more complicated on an instrument. Um, I mean, I could possibly do that, but it making it match, it, that's not my specialty, and it would probably never look any better than it will if I just repair the top, buff it out as best I can, and go on from there. This one also has a, uh, this rosette is just a plastic glued on top, and it's come loose, so we're going to re-glue that. And I will show a little work that I'm going to do on the fingerboard. The fingerboard has some pretty good pitting in it, and I'll show you how I get rid of those pits and how I recrown the frets and do a fret job on this. And uh, most people think you have to take the frets out and, to fix that, but you don't. And I'll show you how I do it. And it's very easy and it does a very nice job. It will make this fretboard look better than it came from the factory when we're done. Well, I wasn't really planning on showing you much about the uh, bridge replacement on this ovation, but I thought because it is kind of unique, I will show you. First of all, this is the saddle that they had in there. Of course, it's got an electric pickup on it, you can see. Why, why they felt the need to put these pins on the end of the saddle that go all the way through the top. They don't have any threads on them or anything. They just stick down through the top. It just weakens the top. It just makes another pair of holes that they didn't need to put in there. Um, as a matter of fact, here's the whole way it's made. That sits down inside the bridge there, or inside the saddle, I guess you'd call that. And um, anyway, those pins just, there's one on this side too. Of course, they've got a, they have to have a hole there anyway for the pickup, but one hole is one thing. Why they had to have this other hole, I have no idea. This is the bridge I took off of. You can see how they put the screws in at an angle. Well, I guess that's to help pinch the top to keep it from pulling off. I don't know. Uh, and they, you know, the saddle area, they basically cut it all the way through um, to get the saddle low enough. And so basically it was cut all the way through into the top. Here's the problem though. Well, I was telling you that it's pulled up in those two places where the, where the uh, screws were through the top. But the real problem is that there's no under plate under this bridge. There's, there, you know, normally there's a bridge plate there. In this one, they don't have a bridge plate there. What they have is fan bracing. It's uh, multiple little thin, very thin braces that just go down in a fan shape here. And so there's no actual bridge plate under the bridge. Well, I know they do that in a lot of, you know, um, classical guitars and things like that. But um, on a steel string guitar, I just don't think that's quite strong enough, especially when the braces are as thin as these are under here. You can't see that, but they're pretty tiny. I can tell by just feel. So I'm not sure just how to approach this. I don't like this bridge at all. This bridge is made out of an inferior material. I'd say it's mahogany. Um, you know, and while mahogany is good for instruments, it's not necessarily a good bridge. Bri mahogany's 
it's a hardwood, classified as a hardwood, but it's the, one of the softer hardwoods, let's put it that way. So it's really not a great material for a bridge. I'm tempted to make him a new bridge out of ebony. Maybe make it a hair bigger so I can cover up the marks around the edge of this one where it's pulled up. Making it a hair bigger will just help firm it down to this top too that I think is kind of weak. I don't think I'm going to put screws back through it. I don't think they help anything in this particular case at all because there's no bridge plate under there for them to hold to. They're just pulling up on this little weak top anyway. I know the customer really likes this guitar a lot so we got to do something to make it right and uh, we'll just see what happens. Wow, I just keep discovering things. I thought they had glued the bridge to the wood because that's the way it kind of came off. They didn't. They glued it right to the paint and that's all black paint on there. I didn't realize that but as I'm looking at it you can if you look close here you can see there's a rim of paint right around the edge here. It took the whole finish off the top. That's what broke loose is the paint broke loose from the top which is kind of unusual really. Generally speaking the glue pulls loose from the paint but in this case the glue stuck to the paint so well that the paint pulled up and the paint has stuck to the underside of the bridge. Oh boy. So I doubt I'm going to clean that off and put that back on. I'm pretty sure I'm going to make a new ebony bridge exactly like this one even with the back holes. I don't like these back holes either um, because that pulls that bridge up you know but in this case I don't know what else to do. I If I put holes down through the top Keep in mind, there's no bridge plate in there and there's no room to put one in there because of all those fan bracings. It's a dilemma, man. I'm not sure how to really fix this well. Um, the only way I can see is make an identical copy of this, put it back on there, and hope for the best. I've ordered in a blank of ebony. That'll be here in a few days. And then I'll make this out of ebony. Try to make it exactly like this. Except that I'm going to make it a hair bigger all the way around just to uh, cover a bigger area. That'll also add a little bit of stability to it too. But I did tell you I would show you how I'm going to do the fret job on this and how I'm going to fix the pits in the fretboard. So we'll do that. Well, you've seen me before. And before I start, I might as well just say, you know, people are going to be saying, well, you should have this in a neck vise and all that. Well, I just don't use a neck vise. I like it like this. I'm just happy with this. It works for me. I don't have a problem with it. Um, so we'll level them until we get rid of those marks. Now you're going to hear a lot of noise here. This makes a lot of noise. Okay, what I do is I level like this until I can feel this thing slide from one end to the other without grabbing. When I feel that, I know I'm level. When it grabs, there's a high fret. And I also make sure that I've cut all the frets too, because if it's not cutting it, obviously you have a low fret. So we've got all the frets cut, they're all flat across the top. I, I, I also go until I get rid of the last string mark and the last string mark is right here. I can still see it just barely. It's on the very first fret and when I can just see that disappear that's when I'm done. So I've got just a little bit more to go. Okay I can see the faintest of that mark right now so I know that that's good. I, I don't see any point going beyond that. Once you get down to your deepest mark, you're pretty much finished and the frets feel good. They're all good and level now. Um, I can feel a little fret protruding out here on the end of this first fret. So I'm going to try to get the file there and just level that off there a little bit to get rid of that. I can feel it on protruding here. What happens is the wood shrinks over time and the metal doesn't. So you'll feel your fret ends come out. So I can feel that in a place or two and I just want to get rid of that. Feels good. Feels good. Okay, so we got it good and level. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is take my round over file and I'm just going to knock the corners off, leave the, leave the very top of the fret flat. I don't want to get rid of the flat mark. If you get rid of the flat mark, well then you've lost your flat plane. As I've said before, I don't tape it off. I used to. I find that 
taking it off is just a lot of extra time and which is money so basically I save the customer money by not taping this off and I don't ever scratch the fretboard and this one's so messed up anyway there's the, the pits are so deep in this that even if I scratch it I'm gonna have to take a lot of wood off of this yet anyway so I'm not too worried about scratching the fretboard Okay, I've got them, the corners rounded back off. They're still slightly flat on the top. Now I'm going to take a small piece of 320 wet or dry sandpaper, using it dry. I'm going to basically polish all of the fret. This really makes them, it, you would think, well, what does that do? It, it gets rid of any particular rough spot that there is, first of all, and it makes them all bright and shiny, looks like brand new. That's, that's one of the biggest differences in making it really look good and like brand new from the factory. Okay, but that scuffs up the fingerboard. And it doesn't scuff it up exactly, it just, I don't know, it dulls it up. But that's okay because in this particular case, I'm gonna go through and level every single fret anyway because of the pits that are in the fretboard. Now you can see in this first fret up here, there's two pits in this area right here that are pretty low. And a couple in this, but not nearly as bad. I can feel them in there. You can feel them. There's one real, a pretty deep one right there. And for the most part, we should be able to get all that out and then the fretboard will look like brand new when we're done. I just take my single edge razor blade using this technique right here. Okay, that looks really, really good. Now that would be good enough, except that I don't stop there. What I do is I go right back along each side of every fret and I scrape out the, I scrape it one time across with the corner of the blade making sure up here that I don't come down on top of the guitar this gets rid of the junk right at the fret okay now I have to be careful again up here so I don't scratch the top Okay, that's all there is to that. That is a very good condition fretboard now. Now, that would be all you would really have to do to it, but I always like to put oil on there, and I use linseed oil. In one of my other videos, several people made some really smart alecky comments about using linseed oil, but all I can tell you is they've been using linseed oil on instruments since the days of Stradivarius. So uh, I uh, have no problem using linseed oil on there at all. As a matter of fact, I think it does a great job. It makes it look wonderful and it's uh, good for the wood. So let your comments fly. That didn't take very long and that did a real nice job. Now it'll play good. We'll be able to set the action down really low because the press are perfectly level. So that'll help a lot. Now we're going to put her on the shelf until we get the uh, new bridge plate so I can make the bridge for it.